when did the cops come to our house? When did you open the door to let the cops come into our house? Mm -hmm. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna react to Mr. Balam because you love him. We all love him. Let's get into this. Cranbrook, which is a small snowy town in British Columbia, Canada, used I to be love a place snow. no one had heard of. Then Isaiah Otiano mm -hmm. changed that. In 2006, an 18 year old smiling young man named Isaiah Otiano stepped off of a plane in Cranbrook and began making oh, his way right. towards the baggage claim. As he walked, everyone in the airport stopped and stared up at him. Isaiah was six foot nine inches tall, and he was oh. him, making him easily hey, one man. of the most unique people in all of Cranbrook. Isaiah, who was the son of a Kenyan politician, had worked really hard to earn his slot at the local university mm -hmm. called the College of the Rockies. His plan was to use that degree to get a great job so he could help support his family back in Nairobi. Not long after the first semester All of right. Isaiah's freshman year had started, he was not only flourishing academically, but also socially. His big oh. smile and his charm and his incredibly good manners had earned him many friends as well as the nickname the Gentle Giant. But the person Isaiah Oh, was all right, I see what they did there. <laughs> was another student named Isaac Hockley. Isaac, in addition to being a student at the College of the Rockies, was also a passionate photographer and actually worked part-time for the local newspaper as a freelance photographer. Mm -hmm. Isaac and Isaiah had briefly met in late 2006 at their campus's billiard halls when they were both playing pool, but that interaction had not made them friends. What had cemented their friendship and made them very, very close was one night in early 2007, Isaiah had gotten a job as a bouncer at a local bar because he's six foot nine, mm -hmm. and so he was the bouncer, and Isaac had come to <laughs> Because the, bar it's the way he said it, because he was six foot nine, I mean, yeah, he was, he was tall. And that's good, like, I don't see that being a problem, but, you know, like, he got that job because, you know, he's like a big guy, and, you know, if somebody messes around, he's like, what's up? See Isaiah just to go to the bar, and so Isaiah's at the front, he's checking people in, and mm -hmm. then he hears this commotion in the bar behind him, and he turns and he sees Isaac is getting attacked by this huge guy that's way stronger than him, who looked oh. like he was the aggressor in the fight. And so without any hesitation, Isaiah turns and just starts galloping into the bar. He's leaping over chairs, he's leaping over tables, and he jumps into the fray, and he fought off Isaac's attacker. Mm -hmm. And so after the dust settled, Isaac was so thankful for Isaiah, even though Isaiah kind of downplayed it and acted like it was no big deal. Right, but and I, no big deal. You know, I was jumping, you know, chandeliers and everything, like... No, but he was humble. You can tell that. Like, he was humble, and I think that that's what made him, like, such an amazing person. experience totally bonded these two very different people, and after that, they became totally inseparable. Mm. Over the next couple of semesters, the pair would often go off on long rides outside of Cranbrook into the mountains and the forests, and they would just chat. Isaiah would talk about what it was like to live in Kenya and how he was really here to try to be successful like his father. And Isaac would talk to Isaiah about his passion for photography and mm -hmm. what it was like growing up in Canada around Cranbrook. On one very memorable drive, the pair were driving at night along this kind of winding road that went through a forest when all of a sudden a moose leapt onto the road and blocked their way. Oh! So Isaac at the last second had to... Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so we can get to 1k. That would make me really happy, guys. Swerve to avoid the moose, but... Ultimately, they did not get into an accident, and it was just a close call. Mm -hmm. So Isaac was totally fine. He'd kind of recovered within seconds of getting past the moose. But Isaiah, who was in the passenger seat, was totally shaken up by it. And when Isaac started talking to Isaiah about why he was so shaken up, because after all, they are fine. They did not get into an accident. Isaiah would admit that he wasn't shaken up because they almost got into an accident. He was shaken up because he saw a moose. He didn't know moose existed. And so seeing this enormous creature... Oh, all right, road, like, yeah. ...just then totally spooked him. Mm -hmm. And so after this, Isaac loved to bring this story up as a way of kind of making fun of Isaiah for his fear of moose. But it was totally in a <laughs> loving way. And Isaiah would always laugh right along with him. But yeah. despite how well everything was going in both Isaiah and Isaac's lives to that point, everything would come crashing down in 2008. 
On Pun May intended, 13th, I guess. 2008, so two years after Isaiah showed up in Canada, Isaac got a phone call from his employer, the local newspaper, who told him he needed to head into town to take some pictures of a crash that had just happened. A helicopter had been flying over Cranbrook conducting a power line survey when they had lost power and crashed. And all three people, the pilot and the two people in the back who were actually doing the survey, they all died on impact. Isaac, like everybody else who heard about this, was totally shocked. One, because it was totally tragic and horrible, but two, because nothing ever happened in Cranbrook. Mm -hmm. So to have something so big like this happen right downtown was just yeah. unheard of. And so Isaac hopped in his car and he began making his way to Please don't send me. And it didn't take long before he saw this massive ring of people right at the intersection between 10th and 14th. That I they were all inside. If he was buildings and everyone was just looking in the helicopter. There was this massive mound of jagged metal that was on fire and all this black smoke was coming off of it. And there's ambulances nearby and police and the fire department was there and they're trying to put out the flames, but they can't do it. And so Isaac parks his car and he rushes over to this ring of people and works his way towards the front. He pulls out his camera and he began taking pictures, first of the wreckage and the fire and then also of the police as they put tarps over the bodies. Little did Isaac know, these pictures he was taking were about to take on a whole new significance for him. Earlier that day, just before 1 p.m., Isaiah wrapped up his final class of the day, and after he was done, he remembered he had some letters in his backpack that he had been meaning to mail to his family back in Kenya. And so he decided on his way home, he would make a detour to the post office and he would mail those letters. And so he left the building where this final class was and he stepped out into the bright sunshine of that May day. He put his headphones on and then he began to walk. At about 1.05 p.m., he arrived at the post office and he went inside just long enough to put his letters in the mail slot and then he headed back outside. One minute later, at 1.06 p.m., as he was crossing 10th Street, the helicopter above lost power and crashed directly on top of Isaiah. Oh my God! Seconds, he and the three people on board the helicopter would all be dead. It's believed because Isaiah was listening to music on his headphones, he didn't even hear the helicopter as it was crashing down. He was just walking, and then he was dead. It was a total freak accident. It wasn't until later that day that Isaac would realize the pictures he had taken of this scene included pictures of his friend. Oh, Jesus. You know, I actually feel bad for Isaiah because he just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, it was not his fault. It was not the helicopter's fault. It was nobody's fault. It just happened, which is crazy. And the fact that Isaac took photos of his dead friend and he had no clue. On a warm summer night in 1998, a seven-year-old boy named Tyler Florian fell asleep watching TV on his living room couch. Tyler lived with his parents as well as his older brother, Will, who was 10 years old in a modest two-story home in a rural neighborhood in West Virginia. That night, Tyler's father, who normally tucked the boys in at night, was out for work. And so after Tyler fell asleep, it was his mother who gently woke him up and encouraged him to head upstairs to his room. And so Tyler, he gets off the couch and he's groggy, he makes his way over to the stairs, he climbs up the stairs and he turns right and heads down the hallway to his room. He goes into his bedroom, he climbs into his bed, and then he falls asleep. In order to understand what happens next, you need to have a good understanding of the layout of the second floor hallway. That hallway stretched from the front of the house all the way to the back of the house. And at either end of this hallway were doors that led outside of the house, and these doors had big windows on them. The front of the house, that door, if you walked out it, you'd be walking out onto a balcony that overlooked the front yard of the property. Mm -hmm. But if you walked out the back door of this second floor hallway, you would not be walking onto a balcony. You would not even be on the second floor. You'd be basically stepping into the backyard of the house. And the reason for this is because the house was built into a hill. And so the back half of the house is literally oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there is no door on the lower half of the house because there's yeah. no earth behind the door. And so it's that second floor doorway at the end of the hall that serves as kind of like the exit to the backyard of the house. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, 
Tyler, he gets upstairs, he goes to his bedroom, which is towards the front half of this hallway, and he falls asleep. And then only about an hour after falling asleep, he wakes up to the sound of someone using the bathroom. Tyler's bedroom was positioned right across the hall from the bathroom, and his door was open, and so Tyler's laying on his bed, he opens his eyes, and he's looking Oh, and he can door. look, he can look through his door and see into the bathroom. Oh, that feels, ooh. Close the doors, you know what I mean? Like, close the doors, why would you sleep with your door open? No, 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 we're not about to do that. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so we can get to 1k, that would make me really happy, guys. In the bathroom, and the bathroom, the door is shut, but you can see there's light coming out from underneath the bottom mm -hmm. of the door, so we know someone's in there. And so Tyler's just laying there watching whoever's in there, he's assuming it's his brother, who has a habit of going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and so he's just kind of watching, and, and then not... he hears the flick of the light as it's oh. turned off, and he sees the light disappear from inside the bathroom. The door swings open, and sure enough, it's his brother who steps back into the hallway. Oh. His brother looks into Tyler's room, but doesn't attempt to interact with Tyler. Mm -hmm. Instead, Will just turns and walks back down the hallway towards his bedroom. And so yeah. as Tyler is listening to the sound of his brother's footsteps fade down the hallway, he closes his eyes again and prepares to go back to sleep. But as he's laying there with his eyes closed, he can tell that his brother has stopped short of his bedroom and has turned around and is now walking back up the hallway towards the bathroom and towards Tyler's room. And so Tyler opens his eyes again because he knows his brother is about to be right in front of his bedroom. And he's thinking, OK, you know, maybe he forgot something in the bathroom. And so Tyler decides to just watch to see what his brother does. So sure enough, Will walks all the way up until he's standing right in front of Tyler's open door. But instead of going into the bathroom, Will walks into Tyler's room. And right away, all right. Tyler sits up and says, you know, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? And his brother, he pauses for a second, and he begins to say something that sounds like he saw something out there, but, you know, he's hesitant. He doesn't really know how he wants to frame the thing he wants to say. And so Tyler's like, come on, what are you doing? It's the middle of the night. What's going on? And finally, Will just blurts out, I, I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. And so Tyler... At first, I thought that it was somebody that broke into the house and they used the bathroom. And I was just thinking, why would you break into a house, take some valuable possessions, and then you go take a leak? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But it has happened before. But yeah, and what he saw in stripes, hmm. He hears this and he can't compute what he's being told. And so he just says, what? What are you talking about, Will? What did you see in the hallway? Do you want to do this? Do you? And Will would say again, I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I've seen him a couple times in the last couple of days. I go to the bathroom, and then when I start walking back, I see him outside the back door in our backyard. And so Tyler is so scared because his brother does not sound like he's making a joke. His brother sounds like he's telling the truth. And just the fact that his brother can't quite find the words to describe what he saw makes it even creepier. Real. And so Tyler, he gets out of bed and he says, Will, we've got to go tell mom. But that required going into the hallway and going down the hall towards where apparently this man in stripes was mm -hmm. to get to their mother's bedroom. And so Will, who initially was not that scared of this man in stripes he had seen, was now starting to get pretty panicked in seeing Tyler's reaction to this. And so Will tells Tyler, you know, stay right there, stay in the room. And so Will, he kind of peeks back into the hallway and he looks all the way down, and there is no man in stripes anymore. There's no one in the hall. And so he tells Tyler, you know, the coast is clear. And the two of them run down the hallway all the way right in front of that door that leads into the back of the property. So I don't really understand what he, if he said a year that this happened, because if he said that it was a man in stripes, maybe it was a man that escaped from jail now i know that the attire changes from year to year or decade to decade but it could be that or it could just be i don't know somebody trying to prank them uh so yeah where the man in stripes was and they turn left and they go into their parents bedroom where just their mother was because their father was out of town and so they charge in there they wake their mom up and they're talking over each other trying to communicate to their mom that there was a ghost that there was an intruder that there was something bad happening around their house and so finally their mom just tells them to be quiet and she says okay boys sit on the bed i'm gonna go have a look around the house and so the two boys do as they're told they sit on the bed and their mom leaves the bedroom, she goes into the hallway, and she looks immediately to her left, 
where the man in stripes supposedly was, and she doesn't see anything. She just looks out into oh, the backyard. There's nothing I thought there. she was going to see something. the other direction, out okay. in front of the house, doesn't see anything. She walks all around the house. She goes outside. She looks everywhere, but she doesn't see anyone or anything. Excuse me, that's what nobody would ever do. You see, I, I with all due respect, no other person in their right mind would just like me. You know what, let me just walk outside of my house to see who was that person that was standing outside of my window? No, just the fastest way to solve this, call the police and grab some knives. And, you know, if, if the thing goes left, you. But, yeah, I just think that, you know, going outside, I don't know. I mean, I would not walk around the house that late at night because there's bugs on the ground and there's, like, you know, stuff. And I mean, you know, I understand what, what the mom did, but no. Mm -mm. No. anything and so eventually she comes back inside the house she goes up to the second floor she goes back to her bedroom and she tells her boys look you probably just spooked yourselves there is no man in stripes you're totally safe you're totally fine just go back to bed you probably just imagined whatever you saw and so will who was the one who saw the man in stripes was very quick to accept his mother's answer it actually seemed like it was a relief to have somebody tell him that what you had seen wasn't real. And so he very happily... You know, it is really easy to see shadows, to see kind of human-like shadows. But when you can totally tell with your eyes that there is a form, <laughs> the outline of a person, and it's really well defined, you did see somebody. Like that was somebody there breathing close to the door and it had glass and I don't understand if it was the type of glass that you can like literally see through it or it was the type that's like a little bit thick and it has like um you know flowers on top of it that has like different decorations made into the glass you know and so you cannot truly see 100% outside. Went back to his bed and he fell asleep but Tyler who had not seen the man in stripes but had a very intense reaction to hearing his brother describe it, could not accept his mother's answer. It just totally freaked him out because his brother was always joking around about stuff, but this did not feel like a joke. This felt very, very real. But over the course of the next couple of days, weeks, months, years, Will never claimed to see the man in stripes again. And so pretty quickly, Tyler forgot. They forgot. Fast yeah. forward 11 years to 2009. Mm. So Tyler is now 18 years old. And he and his mom were out in the car running some errands. And as they're driving around, they were just chatting about all sorts of different things. And at some point, they began talking about one of their beloved family pets, a dog named Max that they had when Tyler was really young. And so as they're kind of swapping stories about all the goofy things that this dog did, Tyler's mom suddenly says, hey, Tyler, do you remember the time that I opened the front door to let the cops into the house? And Max came bounding into the house and he went right into the kitchen and he ripped open all the food. And Tyler's looking at his mom like, wait, when did the cops come to our house? When did you open the door to let the cops come into our house? And mm -hmm. as soon as Tyler said this to his mom, his mom looked at him as if she had just given away something she hadn't meant to. And then she... Oh! Oh! You see! You see! This is what I say! This is what I am always saying! You see! Mm, the mom did not want to freak everybody out, but she saw what they saw. Alright, that's why she said, you know what? Go back to sleep. Because nobody in their right mind, knowing that they saw an upline of a real breathing person outside of their backyard, that's like literally on their floor. Like, that's how bad the situation is you just walk outside and she was like oh let me walk outside into the night you know i don't see anything i need a, a light and everything you know like somebody was outside and i'm just walking over there you know being all happy and pink and everything no i knew she was mm. i knew it i knew it she kind of relaxed and said you know what i never got around to telling you now that i'm thinking about she was like ah oh, you mean this thing secret that i've had here um, just tell you about this <laughs> you know parents love to do that they like never tell you something and they're like oh i forgot to tell you this big secret that i've been having mm, my bad <laughs> you and your brother were asleep you didn't even know this happened and then afterward me and your father decided not to tell you guys because we didn't want to scare you back when you were about seven years old and will was about 10 years old your dad was away at work, and we were all asleep one night, 
when suddenly I wake up to the sound of someone or something moving around outside of our house. And so I sit up in bed and I go into the hallway and I look left and I look out that door into our backyard and I see standing up against the glass, this man with his hands pressed to the window looking into the house. And so Tyler's mom would tell him how she totally freaked out. She flipped on the lights and it scared this guy who ran off. And then she called the police and the police showed up. And that's when their dog Max came bounding inside and shredded the bag of food. And the police, they searched the property, but apparently they... Um, isn't this the same story that the guy said, you know, her kid? I don't know if it was William, but I think it was William, like the old one. They never found this guy. Tyler's mom would go on to tell him that the police warned her that her description of this man that was standing at their back door matched the description of a man who was wanted for murder who was on the loose in the area. Tyler was dumbfounded. He didn't remember this because obviously he had been asleep because this is something he would have remembered. And so he had so many questions about this whole situation. But the first question he asked his mom was, well, what did he look like? And his mom said, well, you know, he was tall, he had dark hair, he had blue jeans on, and, oh, you know what? He had a striped shirt on. This bitch! <laughs> oh my God, girl. I know you lied. I mean, they saw. It is the same story, but the mom was like, you know what? Did y'all see this? I forget that. And she came up and, and she told her own story. And it's just mind-blowing that the kids actually saw a murderer outside of their house. And the mom was like, hey, no, it's all right. Just go back to sleep. <laughs> Let me call the police. Oh, my God. Yo. <laughs> Parents are on another level for real. They're like on another level. Man. It would turn out for a couple of days in the summer of 1998, this suspected murderer who was on the run from police had apparently been hiding out on Tyler's family's property. And in the middle of the night, for whatever reason, this suspected murderer would walk over to the back door of the second floor hallway and he would put his face up to the glass and he would stare into their home. What? This was the man in stripes that Bill claimed to have seen. He was real. Tyler, after making this connection, <laughs> would follow up with his family members and he would do some digging of his own but he was never able to figure out who the man in stripes was or what happened. What it was truly funny is how the mother forgot that in a matter of days. And the mother was like, yeah, what story? It's just that, I don't know, like I have a lot of stuff in my mind, but let me tell you about something that happened to me. So one night I was hearing some stuff and I go outside and guess what I see? I see a man in stripes. No, 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 don't interrupt me. I'm talking. So I saw this man in stripes. And what were you gonna tell me? You saw a man in stripes too? Are you sure? Um, I don't remember you telling me this story. I don't remember it. Like, when did you say this happened? Um, no, I don't remember. Let me tell let me continue with this. So, you know, the next thing that I know is that I'm calling the police. And, you know, what do you mean it happened a few days after? No, 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 no. I mean, you are a little kid. Like, maybe you're imagining things. No, so I called the police. Parents love to do that. This is the end of the video. And if you've enjoyed my reaction, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to give it a big thumbs up and to comment down below. You know, if you've enjoyed it, what part was your favorite part? So, I will see you in my next video.